Now, Bill, in your debates, have you ever heard, <clears throat> excuse me, any reasonable atheist counter to this philosophical argument, or do they just completely ignore it? Well, I've had a lot of debates, and in a few of them, the opponents have attempted to uh, bring up objections. Uh, so, yes, occasionally they'll come up. For example, someone might point out that any finite distance you can imagine, say, the distance between one wall of your living room and the other, that distance can be divided in half, and then it can be divided in half again, and then in half again, and in half again, to infinity. So the claim is, when you walk from one end of the room to the other, you cross an actually infinite number of sub-intervals, and that shows that it's possible to traverse uh, an infinite number of events to arrive at today. That's one counter-objection that might sometimes be raised. And your counter to that would be you're, you're confusing an actual with a abstract? With a potential infinite. Mm -hmm. I think it's vital in these discussions to distinguish between an actual infinite and a potential infinite. An actual infinite actually has an infinite number of members in the collection. But a potential infinite is a finite collection that is always growing toward infinity as a limit. It never gets there. It never actually is infinite. The infinity in this case is merely a limit which this finite process endlessly approaches. So this kind of series is really indefinite not infinite. And I would say that the example of dividing intervals into mm -hmm. sub-intervals would be an example of a potential infinite. You can go on dividing forever, but that doesn't imply that the interval is actually composed of an actually infinite number of sub-intervals.